Hello, my name is Kayla Ingram and I work for Ulta Beauty in Gadsden, Alabama. I wanted to do a video to tell you guys some of my favorite products. I know that when you walk into Ulta Beauty, especially if you don't work there 40 hours a week, it can be very overwhelming. Um, so I just wanted to create this channel to make things easier. Um, a lot of people are fleeking the wings of the eyeliner and carving out their cheekbones and putting on these very dramatic lashes and you know, it, it looks a lot more difficult than it actually is. So I I just wanted to bring this channel to you guys to make it a whole lot easier and please give it a like and a subscribe and if you have any questions or want any product reviews just drop them below thank you so much so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to prep our skin the only thing that I have done off camera was wash my face so now we are going to go in and we are going to exfoliate and all that this one does this is the clarifying lotion by Clinique and number one and I'm super dry so that's why I have the number one um, but this one will exfoliate, but it's a gentle exfoliator. It's not a gritty exfoliator. Because I'm so incredibly dry, some of the gritty exfoliators can be a little bit too much for my skin. So, I go with a liquid exfoliator. And not only does it get all the dead skin off, but it also gets all of the excess oils and everyday nast that we encounter. That way, the foundation actually lays well on the first layer of skin instead of patchy on all the dead skin. So now that we have removed all of the good and bad oils from my skin, we are going to go back and replace the good oils. So, we're going to go in with the Clinique, well anyways, this is the Jelly. And this one has anti-pollution properties to it, which I really appreciate because it puts more of a barrier, not like a film, more like a shield, I suppose is what I'm trying to say here. And we're gonna hydrate it up. At this point in the routine, because I have already hydrated my face, I like to go in and hydrate them lips. And this is the Mamade Lip Sleeping Mask have promised everybody we are going to use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation and I did wear it to work and I was very happy with it with the Lancome La Boss base. This is a primer. I love primers. It is at this point that everything, including my eyelids, are good and primed. That I go in with the foundation. Now, this is because I'm going for a more natural look today. Um, if I was going to do a very dramatic eye, like blues and purples and blacks, like if I was going to do a very nighttime look then obviously I would hold off to do the foundation I would do the eyeshadow that way if there was any fallout of the eyeshadow like the little speckles that you get on your face if y'all don't know what fallout is um, then we can go back in and clean that up to where it's not gonna be an issue but since we're going very natural today and very light in the makeup I'm going to just go on in with the photo focus foundation by wet and wild okay so, we have went in. Now, I'm going to come back in with the Clinique Moisture Surge. This is a thirst relief spray, but it is also a good primer as well as a good setting spray. Um, in my opinion, I love it because I am incredibly dry, but the Moisture Surge line is, is um, oil-free. So anybody that has oily skin should not feel guilty about using the Moisture Surge because it is oil-free, so it's not gonna add to your issues. Now, a lot of moisture, uh, a lot of setting sprays tell you that you should go in a X formation and then in a T or like a plus sign. Um, but I just like the one, two, three method because it doesn't get everywhere. I find that when I just go ham and start spraying it everywhere, it's in my hair, it's on the person behind me. Um, people are slipping in the floor when they're trying to get me. I'm just playing. <laughs> 
But you see how that foundation is so manipulatable? Like it is set here. Let me zoom you in. Spray again. And we're going to do them brows, girl. Them brows. Bless they soul. So I'm using the Anastasia Brow Dip Pomade. And my color is dark brown. <clears throat> using the Anastasia brush as well with the spoolie on the other end. Got a little good spoolie. Okay, so when I'm doing the brows, I like to brush all the hair upward. Okay. And I will literally just tap because this product really goes a long way. Um, one little tap usually gets me through the whole brow. Sweep it up one more time. <laughs> How to adjust that lighting? So I like to start at the bottom of the brow and drag that straight line. Do you see that is a straight? And connect that back there. Don't think. Now, for you to know how to map brows, you're gonna take it right here at the edge of the nose. Put a dot right here over the pupil at the arch. Put a dot, and then right here, even. You see how it lays across the nose. Boom. That's your third dot. And so, I'm gonna drag. That deeper in. And just pat and drag, pat and drag, pat and drag, pat and drag. And we're gonna pat and drag upward from the bottom brow line that we've drawn, that straight line, we're gonna pick it up from here and pull it upward, okay? And you gotta be like Bob Ross with your eyebrows, okay? No mistakes, just happy accidents, okay? You're an artist. And these girls are sisters, they're not twins. So, twins is the goal. If you ever get twins, congratulations, but. Okay, and now we have a sassy eyebrow. And so I'm gonna blend that first map dot back into that straight line. And again, everybody has little mistakes because I just went outside of that line. You see that? Not cute, but we're gonna go back for him. We're gonna fix it and blend it all the way back down. Okay, so I wanna try and see if the photo focus is coverage enough to go in as a mock concealer. I just want to check that coverage because it's a tutorial, so why not? And I'm going to take a teeny little concealer brush and pop on that photo focus foundation. You can see there's just a little bit there. And I'm going to carve out that straight line again. So I'm going to come right here at the beginning and just real steady drag that right around that brow and carve that girl out okay and now I'm gonna come back on the top just to make that just to make my point and pat and drag the remaining product down into the eyelid and drag that back upward blend that out come back up to the top Ooh. grab a little more product Beautiful. 
Now we gotta do it again. But you see the difference of a good sassy brow compared to a no brow. I said the face back up with the spray. You're like, girl, you live for that spray. I really do though. I really do though. So, I'm going to use the Three Steps to Sculpt Palette by NYX, okay? And the reason why I wanted to bring this one up is because for the Casper-looking people out there like myself, hello, nice to meet you, this one is blue undertoned, okay? And I'm like, girl, why don't you get a bronzer that's blue undertone? I do, though, okay? And it is by NYX, and I love it because the taupe compared to an orangey bronzer. The Curvy Contour Stick by Clinique, okay? I love this, love, 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 love this, but they need to make it in a taupe. So Clinique, if you're watching this video, anybody in Clinique, please do a taupey blue undertoned bronzer like this one. And you can see that when I do the more warm undertoned bronzer, how that looks, you can definitely tell that this is orange and this is like a Taupe. It is a taupe. It is just a neutral, beautiful uh, contour shade, and I absolutely love it. Because I'm going to take my angled contour brush and go in with the bronzer, tap off the excess, and now there is an invisible line between the tip of the ear and the corner of the mouth, and we're just going to carve that out. Okay, and I know it looks a little harsh at first, but that's cool. We're gonna come back and blend them. Okay, and blend it to the side. And just push it back up into the hairline because you want it to be a nice smooth transition and not a very bold, blocky, unblended, bronzed area. And just like you brush your teeth in little circles, you want to blend that out in little circles. And come back in. And push that product back into the hairline. And you kind of want to stop right at your pupil. Especially if you're doing like, or not your pupil, but right here at like the arch of your eyebrow. For a very dramatic one, do not bring it all the way to the corner of the mouth or you'll look like Maleficent. And that's cute for Halloween, but it's not cute for everyday look. So, come back in here. I want to buff it out. Come back here at the bottom of the chin and carve out that jaw to give the double chin a less dramatic appearance because he is not the star of the show. These eyes are. I do this after my contour just because I want it to be fresh when I come in with my setting powder. You see that? And then I'm gonna come back up here and work on this 11 that I'm developing because it's not cute. I'm 23, no ma'am, no ham. Come back in and buff that out. And see how that brightens the face up and just really pulls your attention to my eyes. So now, we're gonna come in with the mattifying powder and just pat into the product. And come back under the eye and really set that area. I wanna come back in underneath this contour and really carve out that harsh line. And now that we are here with this, I'll give you an up close. I'm going to take my blended brush and just sweep the excess powder off of the under the jaw area. Now I'm going to spray it with the Moisture Surge Hydrating Mist again. Mm. No. And this is really the only portion of the makeup tutorial that I'm okay with you using your fingers with. Um, and that's just because a lot of the highlighted brushes, I feel like, flick glitter and shimmer everywhere. So I use my ring finger just because of the pressure and go in with the highlight and drag it right across the 
peak of that cheekbone and unless it is gleaming to the high heavens I do not feel as though it is there so you guys can use highlighter at your own risk but I go in probably about four times with this highlighter because I love it and that primer really does make a difference on how that highlight is going to stick to the face for example now I'm going to take that same highlight color and come right here in the tear duct and brighten that eye look up. And this is just for a very on the go, very natural look, okay? So now that we have got the eyeshadow portion done, because again, we're just very light, very minimal today. Um, we're going to come in with a coal liner and of course, jet black and get in there and I like to line that upper water line and a lot of people have issues with that so I just take and pull that lash line up just a smidge lightly line it and drop it okay come back in Now we are going to use the Clinique Pretty Easy Liner. And I start at the back of the lash line. And just a block liner is all I'm gonna do today because again, very light makeup. And now we're gonna go in with some mascara, just some right of the mill waterproof because I cry about everything and we're not gonna do that today. So this is my little spoolie. And I like to tilt my mirror. So when I go in to do the upper lash line, I will tilt my mirror upward. Obviously not that dramatic. This like this, so that my eye looks down and there's less room, or there, yeah, there's less room between my lashes and my lid. Okay, so I'm loving this look so far. Now I need lashes, and so I'm going to use. applicator and hold that in place so that I can get my eye lure glue this is a sampler that came in the pack of eye lure lashes and I have to be completely honest with you guys this is the best glue I've ever used but So now the very last thing that I like to do, and I like to do this last just in case there's any whoopsies, we can go ahead and cover those up, is I like to do go in with the lipstick, and today I'm using the Kat Von D Bow and Arrow, just because it's a nice blue undertone, and it's not red, it's not orange, it's not pink, it's just nice and neutral, and so I'm going to zoom y'all in here. And so I like to go in and make it X, and just really carve out that Cupid's bow. Now you are done. And the only thing that I have to add to this video is that this smells like paint. It smells like paint. It doesn't smell unbearable, 
but I could deal with this for the coverage. But it almost smells like the Urban Decay All Nighter, which I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but that is flammable. And so at Ulta, you have to put that in the hazardous waste. Well, we destroy it because it can't be left out in the regular dumpster. So, I wonder if the same is true about this one. I did not think about that until just now. I was tested on smartphones, but I wonder about this camera because this is, this is a pretty good camera. We'll see if it has any flashback on the camera. But thank you guys so much for watching. And please like, subscribe, and comment below if you have any questions about any of the products that I used here today or if you want a future video with any other products. And thank you so much.